Good morning and welcome to River City. My name is Linus and I would love to guide you through a few announcements real quick. If you're new to River City, we would love to have the chance to get to meet you and to get to know you. You can go over to our website and click the I Am New tab, and that way you can put your information and you can also put prayer requests. We would love to get to know you. Today, following our 11 a.m. service, we have our first steps. It's an opportunity for you to plug in at River City, learn about who we are, and learn about your talents and your giftings. Remember, there will be child care, and you can go to the foyer 15 minutes after service today. guys, my name is Kristen Dees. I'm the youth director here at River City. We are trying to take our teens to camp this year. It's going to be Camp Mulberry in Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's June 9th through the 15th. Cost for each teenager is $250. This covers camp fees and it also covers gas and transportation as well. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free, free to reach out to me in person via text message or Facebook Messenger. I'm available for any questions that you guys may have. But yeah, we're going to have a great time. It's going to be a powerful mood of move of God at camp and we'd love to have your student there with us. River City, we are excited about our logos classes where you get to dig deeper into the Word of God. Remember that it's right here at the River City campus every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Can't wait to see you. Use this every Wednesday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Come fellowship with us and have a good time. We are really grateful that you chose to worship with us at River City today. We want to remind you, you can stay connected throughout the week on all of our social media. Now, if we can all stand to our feet and give God a great hand clap of praise. Come on, let's give that to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, let's give that to the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. You're not going to let this old man out worship you, are you? Woo, hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. Stir the pot. Amen. Get it going. I like to have church. Amen. I said, I like to have church. Amen. I like good worship. And uh, I think some of the most awesome worship is when we don't play anything on the piano. And I have been in services before. There was a ne never a note played on a musical instrument. And the Holy Ghost fell. The presence of God fell in that place. And just didn't wonder. And never a note played. So... We don't realize that we can, you can just give raw worship. And when it gets to that point, when it's just raw worship from us, it becomes very, very powerful. Amen. And his presence uh, comes into a place. I want to read to you this morning from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 25. Amen. If you just happen to be in the end of the first service, Amen. I was trying to find this scripture in Psalms. I had it wrote down in my notes wrong. And so I went back and looked it up. Isaiah 20, Isaiah 43, verse 25 says, I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. Now this is a problem. This is a problem that man has. We have a problem with this. Accepting forgiveness. Just simply accepting forgiveness and being forgiven. We make something out of it. It's not. So let's bow our heads. Lord, we pray that you would help us today. Open, open our hearts, God, and touch these lips of clay and touch my mind and touch our minds and just... Feed us this morning, God. Give us direction, Lord. And we give you praise and honor and glory for everything you're doing. Keep our family safe this week. We plead your blood and your name over them. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated.
I want to, I want to speak to you this morning about, about laying it down. Getting rid of it. Amen. Laying down, you know, laying down your sin. Well, we have a hard time. We kind of have a hard time doing that because many of us have a problem with believing and believing that God is going to do just what He says He will do. His Word is true. There's one thing God can't do. There's one thing that God can't do. And that's He can't lie. He's not going to lie to you. Did you hear me? He's not going to lie to you. So we need to remember that. That he cannot lie, so he's bound by his word. Amen? And matter of fact, if we would find out in the word of God how many things he's actually bound by, which is, is not, not a lot of things, but there are some things according to the word of God that he's pretty much set on. And, and we have to accept that. And we have to realize that there are things and things that comes into our lives. Amen? Sometimes it looks really good. Some Man, this... I see, I have this promise, this job. Oh, it's so awesome. I remember years ago, I drove a truck for my dad. Actually, I drove an 18-wheeler 14 years, really 16 years, because I started driving when I was 16. And uh, drove all those years in a, in, a, in a truck. And so I had a lot to learn. I had a lot to lay down. My lifestyle sure wasn't conducive for the kingdom of God. And I, I, I had no plan at that point of getting in church. Well, I did have a plan, but it was a it was the forty year plan. Do y'all know what the forty year plan is? Forty year, man. Hey, man. Here we are. Forty year plan. When I'm thirty nine and three quarters and seven eighths, I'm going to at that point, forty years old. I'm going to come to God. I'm going to start serving God. See, I had it all. I had it all figured out. Because by that time, uh, I wouldn't have missed anything. I would have gotten to, to, you know, party and have a good time. Let's don't get, I'm not going to get into all that. But that's the lifestyle that I led. Amen. I, I went through Dallas and I would go through Dallas and, and uh, there was a truck stop up there, big town truck stop. If anybody's ever been around that, I don't even know if it's still there. But that wasn't anything but a playpen for the devil. And I, if I went through Dallas at that time of my life, it was hard for me to not stop at that truck stop. And I, you could sit in your truck and, and get an education. Maybe not the kind you would want, but you'd get education real quick. Hey, Amen. What are all these people running around in this, in this parking lot for? Well, I've, I've had them try to sell me drugs. I've had tried to uh, get them to sell me diamond rings and all that. And I had to tell the guy, don't even wear jewelry. Amen. Well, buy it for your wife. I said, well, she don't have that much jewelry either. So, hey, get back. Amen. She's got a nice ring. Amen. Put a ring on that. I'm going to keep her. Amen. It's cheaper to keep. Oh, oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. That's a song, if y'all remember that. And it's a very true song. So, what? But we as Christians, we travel the world preaching the love of Jesus and his forgiveness for any and all sin. We tell the heathens, uh, we tell the heathens, the addicts, the alcoholic, and the prostitute, come to Jesus and be forgiven. As a result, sinners who have guilt of every conceivable kind of, of sin and evil deeds gladly come to Jesus and are instantly forgiven and delivered from their guilt. I mean, when I went to the altar, when I got up from the altar that first Sunday night, amen, way back at 25, I was 20, amen, I was still 24, almost 25, and I repented of my sins. It felt like a thousand pounds had lifted off of my shoulders, and, and I was able to get up from there and walk so lightly, and the next day I walked into the restaurant that I eat, and everybody, it was like, everybody almost started clapping. I'm like, what are y'all doing, man? Hey, how y'all doing? Well, they you know, small town, so everybody in town knew that Robert Nelson went to the altar. Amen. That was a big deal. That's big time news. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, I've become the, the guy in that community. You know, if you live long enough over in East Texas, one of those communities, you'll become that guy that gets to do all the funerals. Amen. Brother Gladden was that guy when he pastored there in my hometown. He won me to the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pop. 
thank you for extending yourself to me. And, uh, but, but you know, we need to realize that we travel the world preaching or we, we preach the gospel and we struggle the entire time. We struggle with forgiveness ourselves. Because I don't know about you, but I'm the hardest person. I'm the hardest person on myself. So as a result, sinners who have been guilty of every conceivable kind of sin and evil deed, they come to Jesus and and instantly they feel so light, so delivered, set free. Man, do you realize? And and I, I, I told people, I said, I feel so, I feel so free. I feel so free. And I started to tell them everything I had been into, but I said, no, we better not do that. They didn't need to know that. They just You just need to know that God will forgive you. Did you hear me? Amen. You don't need to tell everybody everything. Just tell them that God forgave you. Amen. Do you understand that? The hardest thing in the world is for a Christian to do is to receive for himself the same kind of love and forgiveness he preaches to sinners. Man, I can preach Jesus and everybody, oh, he's going to forgive me. What did that word say? When I, when I read it just a few minutes ago, let me get back over here. Technology. Just simple. Just a simple scripture like Isaiah 43 and 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake. Whose sake? He does it for his own sake. He chooses to do that for his own sake. Why? Well, he chooses to forgive. Because if he were, was to remember, you know, usually when a husband and wife, when we, when we get in an argument, we start pulling out everything, don't we? Come on, let's dirty underwear, dirty, dirty socks. We just want to tell the dirt on everybody. Amen. We want to just bless them down. And what we don't realize is if they've asked God to forgive them, why are we holding something over their head? And, and, and we say that we don't do this, but we do. We sin against the Lord and then uh, proceed to carry about an excruciating load of guilt. I mean, this load of guilt after we've lived for God and the first time we messed up, the first time we stuffed our toe, did any little thing. And, and, and uh, I, I remember getting stopped. I was a truck driver. I got stopped when I came into the state of Texas. I had a, a, a hauled ammonia nitrate. It was really exciting to haul that stuff. It makes a big boom. But, I, but I'm going to tell you what. Hey, we think... That we can live with this. But it becomes more than we can bury. More than we can carry. It becomes so overpowering. Well, why can't you go pray? You know, we're called in Walmart. You know, I've learned how to do this through the years. I started this when I first started pastoring. And yeah, the first time I had one of those crazy saints of God. Catch me in Walmart. Who was it? Barbara Offer. You'd have to know this lady. She's gone on to be with the Lord. But man, she saw me. In the, and she's loud. Everybody in Walmart can hear. Brother Nelson, I just want you to do this. Could you pray for me right here? And I'm like, can't burn, man. Right here in front of, right here in the, right here in the blue light special. Here, you want me to pray for you? I really didn't do that. I didn't ask about I thought, you know what? I'm going to have to get over this. So right now, in the name of Jesus, amen, I just put my hand on the shoulder and prayed for him. In the name of Jesus, God, bless this person, touch this person, lead this person. And God did it. God did it. Let me tell you about this. Church. I believe that we are at the, at, the, at the beginning of something great, something powerful. Amen. Something, some outpouring. And so, well, we've always talked about this, 
But there are things that's happening in the spiritual realm that we've been praying, we've been seeking the face of God, and now God is opening up the door. Just a few weeks ago, did I mention it in this service or the first service? Just about a month or six weeks ago, we had a person that had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. They didn't come to church, I believe, for that. They just came to church with family members, and while they were there, I believe they, they, the report come back that she was cancer-free. There is no cancer no cancer, no cancer, no cancer. And when we pray for our sis- sister Nikki Beecher, we need to be praying no cancer in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit, you've got to go in the name of Jesus. So, this is how we feel. This is how we feel about when we sin. When we sin the, against the Lord, it proceed out and, and to carry excruciating load of guilt. This is what we want to do is we want to, now Lord, I messed up. It wasn't your fault. I want to pay for this one. See, that's, that's us. I want to pay for this one. Oh, I've sinned. So we pay for our failures and we want to be punished. Can you please punish me? Because I know, see, that's what I'm used to. Because that's what my parents used to do to me. My mother was the one that did a lot of discipline around our house. And she was about five foot ten, 150 pounds. And buddy, she could make a belt swing. No, wrong word, sing. And she could make us sing also. Amen. So I've sinned. I knew better. I knew before I did it I was sinning. How many sin like that? Oh, we all, we've all sinned. I knew before I did it that I was going to sin. And then we have the question. This is the question. We, we shook off the conviction of the Holy Spirit, uh, the stubbornness, and I went ahead and I committed the sin. So how can I be forgiven now? How? Well, see, we don't understand this. How can I be forgiven? The danger of Guilt. What is guilt? Guilt is the state of one who has committed an offense, especially consciously. I mean, you knew you were going to commit that sin. You knew before you did it. Let me tell you something. Somebody said, well, if you willfully sin, well, when did you not willfully sin? Because if you sin, you had to give up your will to do it, right? Because it's not his will for us to do it. So it must be our will. It's to satisfy us. Amen. And we need to get us under conviction, uh, under, amen, submission to God and let God use us for His glory. But guilt, the same one who has committed an offense, especially, uh, especially consciously. We look at that and say, there's no way God, oh, Satan uh, wanted one thing from Job. He wanted one thing. He didn't want him to commit adultery. He didn't want him to, uh, to get involved with drugs or alcohol or lust. There was just one thing uh, uh, about Job. He wanted him to curse God. He wanted him to curse God. Well, you've messed up. You just might as well curse God and, and just give it up. Amen. There's, there's no... Oh, there is, there is faith. There is hope. Guilt. What is guilt? It's a state of one being committed, uh, committed an offense, especially uh, consciously. Guilt is dangerous in, in that it destroys faith. That's what it does. Well, I guilt, I'm guilty, so I can't pray for you in Walmart. I can't pray for you in Walmart because I'm not right with God. Oh man, isn't that a terrible place to be? Wouldn't that be ashamed if the preacher was like that? If, if he didn't have the uh, enough know-how and enough sense to read the Word of God and realize that he chooses not to remember our sin. Did you hear, hear me? I said he chooses not to remember. When you ask him to forgive you of that sin, you don't have to worry about him dragging it back up. Amen. Like your wife or your husband does. Every time y'all get in a little spat, we drag up all the dirt. And you know when we drag up the dirt and then after we get through with the fight, we say, oh, I forgive you. Oh, we forgive each other. We just love each other. No, you're lying. You need to clean that out of your heart. Let it go. Don't talk about it anymore. Quit addressing it. If God has forgiven them, let God forgive them. Let them walk in their forgiveness. Because it's a harsh, horrible thing. 
To live with such condemnation and such a weight on your life. Man, I'm not going to live like that, amen. I I think I'll just repent, amen. So our real battle is not with sex, alcohol, drugs, or lust. It's our faith. It is our faith that we suffer in. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, It is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Did you hear me? He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Ben, you know usually how we pray for forgiveness? This is us praying. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, forgive me God. And we just say the same thing over and over and over and over. Oh, stop. Stop. Why don't you just stop and say, and talk to him like he's standing right in front of you because he is there, amen. Because you cannot go anywhere without his presence being there. He fills the universe. And, and talk to him. Lord, you know, I found here lately, I've been talking to the Lord. You know how I've been talking to him? Lord, you know, I, I made a mess out of this. You ever done that? I made a mess out of this, Lord. Can you help me? And Lord, I don't feel that good about where I'm at right now. I don't feel that good about myself right now. Could you help me feel better about myself? Uh, and, and, and the Lord may speak to you and say, well, start reading the Word of God. If you start, read Psalms chapter 8. Amen. Read Psalms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just start reading in the Bible. And I guarantee you, somewhere along the way, God is going to open up the Scripture and going to give you a word from His Scripture that's going to set you on fire. Especially after you get the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's times when I, after I've received the Holy Ghost, that I would be reading my Bible and words would jump out at me. I'd think, my God, what is that? And I've read that verse of Scripture many times before. But that particular day, God had something in that verse that He wanted to show me or talk to me about. And why can't we just talk to Him like this? Lord, you know, you, you know how, you know, I'm, I can pray like a Pentecostal. Amen. Or I can, or I can just talk to you, Lord. One of my good friends has a very close walk with God, and I, I'm gonna call his name, Ronnie Malone, son, Thibodeau, Louisiana. He has a walk with God. How does he pray? How, he doesn't pray the way I prayed all my life, because a lot of my prayer has been spiritual, and his has been spiritual too. But, uh, but he would just, he said, sometimes I get in my little prayer closet where I pray, and I talk to him just like I'm talking to you. Lord, you know I'm a dingbat. Have you ever said that to him? Lord, I'm a dingbat. Lord, I, you know I'll mess it up. You know, Lord, I can mess up more in five minutes and you can fix. And, the, and, and, you know, and the Lord says, it's really not that bad because he's so miraculous. If you'll let God move in your situation, there's no telling what he will do. So a real battle is not with the alcohol and drugs. But Hebrews 11 and 6, that's what it is. It is impossible to please God without faith. Satan wants you to, to be so crushed with guilt. And I, I wish I could explain to the, you that, that much the better this morning. With guilt that you go, that you let go of your faith. He wants you to doubt God's faithfulness. He wants you to think that no one cares. See, he wants you to doubt, well, God's not faithful. You messed up. How many times you messed up? How many times? How many? My God, you've messed, you've messed up more times than Carter got liver pills. Amen. Never, and they tell me that's a, Carter had a lot of liver pills back in. Now, what? I don't know what. That's a whole other subject. So uh, we believe God is a deliverer. Did you hear me? He uh, and and our His promises are true. Did you hear me? His promises true. Is there freedom from sin? Yes, there's freedom of sin. Will he bring us out of the battle? Yes, he will. He will either bring you out of the battle or bring you through the battle. Sometimes God chooses to take you through a battle. That means you're going to have to go through every bit of that battle because certainly God is trying to teach me something or show me something. And when you're having difficult times, and it may be an attack of Satan, but it may be that God is dealing with you and trying to get your attention and show you something in his word or, or, or show you something in life that you can be better at. And so Satan wants you to be so crushed. He wants you to doubt God. And he wants you to think that there's no, no one cares. 
that God is unreachable. Where are you, God? Have you ever prayed and you felt like God was a million miles away? You ever prayed and you felt like, wow, I can't even get this prayer out of the room. It's just right here, eight foot ceiling. It's going about eight foot. And that's about as far as it's going. And, and But you know what? There's been times when I prayed that and I said, I'm going to stay here and pray. I'm going to persevere in prayer. And wouldn't be long, all of a sudden, God would move in that situation. God would start moving on me. And it's easy to pray when you get in the Holy Ghost. Did you hear me? I said, it's easy. That's like having two flames. When you merge those two flames, you got a greater flame. That's why we should be greater together than we are apart. Because the only reason we have power is the power He's endued us with from on high. And that's the Holy Ghost. So, He wants you to be crushed. He wants you to believe that that God no longer cares about your needs and your feelings. He doesn't care. Oh, Yes, He does care about your feelings. And if he can get you to the point of despair, he can flood you with unbelief. Then he has succeeded in his mission. Guilt is like cancer. It can eat away at your spirituality. I mean, it would eat and eat and it will work on you day after day after day. And that's why we need to let it go. We need to lay it down, get rid of it. Amen. Put it behind us and walk forth and walk away from it. So guilt's like cancer. And we're tested by the word. So hold true to God. Will God keep, will God keep forgiving while the struggle goes on? But I'm struggling, Brother Nelson. Well, this is what I tell people that's struggling. I tell, I tell them this. I, I, let me share this with you. Is you need to come to church no matter what you're doing. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm, I'm going to say something. Don't judge me on this. If you're in an extramarital affair, you need to come to church. If you're if you're a dirt bag, you need to come to church. I, I'd probably fit that category of being a dirt bag. Dirt bag. Who 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 called that? Somebody called when we you was a little kid and they called you a dirt bag. We laughed. They were rough, huh? Uh, they had grit. Talk about that grit. That's grit. So, tested by the word and held true to God. Amen. We all face the same struggles. We all face the same trials. The same temptations. Never limit God's forgiveness. But we live in, well, I don't know if God, I've done this so many years, Pastor, what you don't realize, I've done this over and over and over and over, and I just don't know if God will forgive me. Because I've done it so many times. Well, listen, let's go to the Word of God. He forgives in long, uh, His forgiveness in long suffers had no limits. Jesus told His disciples in Luke 17 and 4, and if He trespasses against these seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, Saying, I repent. Thou shalt forgive him. He said, forgive him. Can't, uh, can you believe such a thing? Seven times a day a person willfully sins before you, your very eyes and says, I'm sorry, won't you to forgive me? And we're supposed to forgive them. Now, we look at that from the logical standpoint and say, I don't know about that. That's kind of hard. What you don't realize, I like this when they say, you don't know what he's done to me. I like, or you don't know what she's done to me. Well, get over it. Because if you forgive them, you're going to have to get over it. And let me tell you something. You ain't going to walk down streets of gold with alt in your heart. That's one thing that we need to, we need to preach about. If you got all in your heart against somebody, you better get it right before you die or before the Lord comes because if He comes and you ain't got that right, son, we're still down here. We're this side of the rapture. Amen. We need to, we need to make those things right with God and that person. Would you forgive me? Yeah. Yeah. I've had people come to me before and say, Pastor, you know, I'm going to say this, but I've had hard feelings against you. I'd be like, oh my God. Let me tell you something. You can't do this job without some scrutiny. 
You're not going to stand behind a pulpit and lead people without somebody saying something negative about you. Did you hear me? Amen. Let them say what they want to say. I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay pure, holy, clean. I'm going to seek after God. I'm going to walk after the things of God, not after the things of this world. Oh man. So, can you believe such a thing? Seven times a day, willfully sin before your eyes and, and, and just ask. And I, I am the, uh, to forgive him continuously. I'm supposed to forgive him. How much more will, will our heavenly father forgive us? So don't stop to reason it out. So we, well, we'll reason this out. Well, and we'll find, you know, if we look long enough, we'll find reason enough to, to justify what we do. So how much more will your heavenly Father forgive us? Don't stop to, uh, and, and don't ask how or why he forgives so freely. Just simply accept what your thing is to accept the forgiveness. Wow, you mean I can't walk around anymore talking about, well, I'm bad, man, I was a bad guy. No, I really wasn't that bad of a guy. I've always cared about people. I've all, Even at my worst, I love people. One of my, my best friend's mother uh, told me, she said, Robert, you've always loved people. You've always cared about people. Amen. And, you know, look, that's one thing is we need, we need to fall in love with people. You, and, and you know what? I'm not going to reach, I'm not going to win your family to God. You're going to have to win them to God. Amen. So I can't come over there and do all this for you. There are some things that you're going to have to do for yourself. I mean, you're going to get a, have to get a hold of that yourself and, and let God lead you. And guide you. So don't stop. Uh, don't stop to reason it out. Don't don't ask how are we uh, or how he forgives so freely. Just simply accept the forgiveness. Jesus uh, did not say forgive your brother once or twice. Tell, tell him to go and sin no more. Tell him he'll never he he uh, uh, if he ever does it again he will be cut off. I've heard that God's spirit will not always strive with man. I preach that myself. But well, let me tell you something. I totally preached it out of context. And I was wrong at that point. Because God loves you. See, He doesn't look at you through the man, eyes of man. He looks, at, he looks through the eyes of His Word. And if a person has asked for forgiveness, what does He do? He forgives them and he chooses not to remember, Teresa. Not There's things I want him not to remember. Amen. There's particular things I want him not to remember. And the Bible says that if we repent, he will remember our sin no more. You know, as I was getting ready for this, I, I, I kind of imagined what church would be like today. And this is what I thought I, I said. I can't get one. I can't get one. But if I could get Jeff's etch a sketch, y'all know what an etch a sketch is. It's red, looks like a TV. Amen. It's got two little white buttons on each corner. And you sit there and you can draw stuff on it. You squiggle around, it makes a pretty black line. And you, some people, it's amazing. But when you get through and you, anytime you want to stop and, and uh, you just turn that thing upside down and shake it. And turn it back over and the picture's gone. Well, 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 Brother Ferris preaches that and he uses it. And he says, I want you to draw the worst thing you can put on there. Amen. Sin, 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 sin. And I'm going to show you how God's going to deal with it. And he handed it back to Brother Ferris. And Brother Ferris, he said, did you ask the God to forgive you? And he said, yes, I did. He shook that thing and he says, there it is. You're forgiven. Amen. And using that as an object lesson, I thought to myself, He does forgive. And for us to say He doesn't forgive, just like that, we'll get ourselves in trouble with God. Because His forgiveness is complete. His forgiveness doesn't come 
doesn't come with every situation in your life that you're tied to. Well, if, if this, if that. Let me tell you, where do we get the leading of the Holy Ghost? Let me tell you something. If you'll be led by the Holy Ghost, if you will pray and seek the face of God, there's going to be things that you're going to try to do in your life and all of a sudden God won't let you do it. Amen. You know, I used, like I said, I used to do a lot of truck stops back in the day. There's a truck stop in Shreveport, Louisiana. For three years, God would not let me stop at that truck stop. Amen. I just would go by it every time. And one night I finally went by there and turned my, I, I said, I'm going to stop. And, and Lord didn't move on me not to stop. I walked in there and there's a little old black lady that worked in there in the, in the kind of the gift and the little area where they sold stuff at the truck stop. And I walked in there and she said, where have you been? And I, 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 did, I, I, didn't, I can't remember her name. I said, you ain't going to believe where I've been. And I begin to tell her about what God had done in my life. Amen. That's the testimony. That's our, that's our words. That's, that's what we should be telling. If you've been delivered, you should be shouting it, preaching it everywhere you go. It's God's nature to forgive. David said in Psalms 86 and 5, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon, uh, upon thee. God is waiting right now to flood your being with the, with the joy of forgiveness. I mean, the, that joy of forgiveness was unbelievable that night. You need to allow His Spirit to flood you with forgiveness. Flood us with forgiveness. Listen to what John chapter 1 or chapter, 1st John chapter 2 verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Propitiation means that the, he is the atonement. He is the atoning sacrifice. He is rep reparation for a offense of injury. The payment of damages. He wants to bless us. He will forgive you. And according to John, the goal of the Christian is is to sin not. And that means a Christian is not bent towards sin. I'm not, I'm not going to be bent towards sin. I'm not going to let sin affect me that much. Come on, folks. A amen. If, if you're having trouble with the internet, you need to speak to the internet. What are you saying? Uh, you have trouble looking at wrong things on the internet? Pray, God, help me. Lord, touch me. Help me not, help me not have the desire. And then you do everything you can not to ever look at it again. And then God will do His part. He'll come along. He'll deliver you. And I believe He will empower you to overcome that situation. Tell Him. So we tell people. Oh, you're habitual. You're hopeless. That's what we want to tell them. Oh, they're hopeless. Don't pray for them. They're hopeless. Oh, they've been to the altar so many times. I've been to church one time, and and, and this lady, uh, we it was a special service, and and this lady was wanting to pray, and I was like, oh man, I'm gonna pray with this lady. We're gonna pray her through, and uh, and the pastor's wife was like, ah, she don't live it. She don't do this. She don't do that. I thought, my God, I wouldn't want to come here either. I, 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 I want to go somewhere where Jesus gives forgiveness and he gives love and kindness and peace. Amen. That's what I'm looking for. I was looking for a peace that passes all understanding. But listen to what he said. Listen to what he says. Uh, what happens when the when that God leaning child sins? If we're leaning towards God, we can cast our cares. Listen to First John two and one. For my little children, these things are right unto you that ye sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And in First John one and nine, it says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Amen. To forgive us all our sins. Amen. He's going to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How much unrighteousness? All unrighteousness. 
Get rid of it. So lay down your gift. Let's lay it down. It's like a kid. You ever seen a kid when he has something in his hand? Amen. If our musicians will come, a kid has something in their hand and they come in and you want to get it out of their hand. I, I know what we usually do and what we would do when Chris was little. We would pop him on the hand and, and his mama would pop him on the hand. She's also the one that she's she's a tough mom. She's a tough mom. Amen. She's the one that looked at Chris and said, "You think I went through nine months of carrying you and all the labor I have having you, and I'm going to let you go to hell? No, son. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray until you get to where. Come on, I believe that God will hear those prayers." Amen. Uh, man, we got musicians back. Thank God. So lay down your guilt. You, you're not going to do it like taking off a jacket. So I, I thought I could just take it off the guilt like a jacket. Well, maybe it may not be that easy. But lay it down. Don't don't lay down. Don't lay guilt down. It's like taking off a jacket and throwing it in the corner. That's not what we're doing. But we're going to allow the spirit. You know, we used to have we used to have prayer services every time. You know, when I first got in church, it was just a normal thing that you had a prayer line every service. And I went and got that prayer line every service until I got the Holy Ghost, which is about a year and a half. Amen. But I didn't quit. You know, and there's something about a person that won't quit. It's hard to deal with them. I know on the ball field, it's hard to deal with them. I always tried to be one of those guys that didn't quit. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to hit you every down. Amen. That's the way we played. That's the way we played the game at the time. Every time, I'm going to hit you. Amen. I played nose tackle. Back in those days, they let you use your forearm. Now, they don't let them do this anymore. Now, they shouldn't have let us done it. I played nose guard. I got right down here where the, tack, where the center is, where he centered the ball. I took my left hand, put it on the ground, which I can't do that no more. And I put my right hand, I loaded it right here. And when that boy, when that when that ball moved, my first shot was to his head. Boom! You didn't have to do nothing else to him. He was through. You just walk by and get the tackle. Some of us need to look at the devil and put him on the run. Did you hear me? You need to put the devil on the run. Amen. We used to sing that song. We got the devil on the run now. We got the devil on the run. Remember that song? Oh, come on, man. You're supposed to remember that, Pop, too. Healing for the body, saving for the soul. Joy for those that have none. Without a doubt, we got a right to shout. Am I right, Sherry? Without a doubt, I've got a right to shout. Why? Because I persevered. I haven't quit. I'm not going to give up. Amen. There's no give up in, it, in me. So lay down your guilt. Lay it down. Lay down. Lay it down through supernatural operation of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit responds to the broken heart and reaches out in faith and lays hold of God's promises. There comes the saint of God, a renewed desire to confess, to yield God's will to become more like Jesus. Come on, don't you want to be more like Jesus? Because Jesus could forgive them. Amen. Don't you want to be one that can forgive the Holy Spirit? Brings the yield. Let's please all stand. Yield, yielded vessels around God thinking our way and thoughts are not His way. Our are His thoughts. God will give us surrender. God will give us if we'll surrender to Him. 
He will bless us with the things we need in our life. You realize this? You, you're always praying for something. You realize you may be praying amiss? What do you mean amiss? Many things, the reason we don't get, get what we want is we pray amiss. We pray to consume it upon our own lust. You understand? And, and we pray, Lord, if you'll make me a millionaire, oh, I'll pay my tithes. I'll pay my tithes, Lord, I will. And then a lot of times we don't follow through. I mean, God, God, if you can't do the small thing, then I don't believe God is going to give you the great big, 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 big thing. Amen? So lay down your guilt. Have a funeral right here this morning. So I'm going to have a funeral. Lay down some guilt and shame. Because with guilt comes shame. When you sin, you'll be ashamed of it. I'm ashamed. Amen. Anytime I've done something that I, especially if I said something out of the way to somebody, I think, oh my God, my big mouth. If I could just, most of the time, keep it closed. Amen. But sometimes God wants us to speak. Sometimes we would have never found out if someone would have, wouldn't have told us. So carry it no longer. Don't carry it any longer. And if you ask, if you had to ask, if you repent, you're forgiven. If you ask, I believe you're forgiven. Because you have not because you ask not. So accept it. Accept it now. I'm going to read you these, uh, one scripture, Jeremiah. Uh, I apologize this morning. I couldn't get all my notes together because it's technology. I know all, the, all you young ones, what gets me is I saw a baby, 18 months old, and that baby could go. Can she fix my phone? Yes. Woo, hallelujah. They come here now like that. I started to tell you something a while ago that was so powerful about last Sunday. Did I, did I make mention about laying my hands on Joshua? I did it in the first service. Preaching two services is not the easiest thing in the world to do either. You, don't, you forget what you said in the other service. And you don't know if you're repeating yourself. So he chooses not to remember my sin. You know what? I said that, and you know what? When I said that, something just lifted off of me. Wow, just lifted. And it, 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 he can touch you in the same way. And you can just. Lay it down. Maybe, maybe there's something here this morning and you've come there's something you need to lay down. Maybe you've got an axe to grind. And you always grind the axe when you're going to kill the Thanksgiving Day turkey. You've got to have that axe. We're going to chop that turkey's head off. Amen. We're not going to chop your head off. We're going to love you. We're going to help you. So I want to invite you this morning. I was going to say there's something we used to do every service. It's called prayer line. And we used to line up down the middle aisle. We're not going to line up down the middle aisle. The first service, we just lined up across the front. Anybody that wanted prayer. Let me tell you something. If I, if I was fighting sickness today, I'd be in the prayer line. Amen. If I was fighting cancer today, I'd be in the prayer line. If I anything I was fighting in physically in my body, I believe I would be in the prayer line in Jesus' name. So I, I tell you what I want you to do. I want us to do this morning. If you're here under the sound of my voice, I want to invite you to come to the front of this church and let's use this just area for a place to pray for each other for a little while. Let's have a little prayer line. Amen. That's, you know, we used to say just a little talk with Jesus. Amen. You probably, maybe you need more than just a little talk.
but I want to invite you. Please come and pray with us this morning. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Oh.